We saw how code can be developed using an IDE, and that's a fairly traditional approach towards program development. We're now going to take a look at a more recent uh, advance in programming. This is a paradigm known as literate programming. And one of the main ways that literate programming is done right now <clears throat> is with Jupyter Notebooks. The idea behind literate programming is that you're trying to write code that's very understandable to humans. This is super important if you're going to be sharing your code with somebody else, but it's also very important if you're wanting to share the code with your future self. It's very easy to forget what code does or how it works, even if you wrote it yourself. The idea behind literate programming is that text and images and other uh, human readable materials interspersed between blocks of code that make it more easy to understand what the code itself does. Most programming languages have the ability to put comments um, within, within the code. And uh, often those comments begin with a hash mark, which simply means that anything that comes after the hash mark gets ignored by the uh, processor. But uh, literate programming really takes this one thing further um, by incorporating the ability to use uh, markup languages such as Markdown. And we will see this in Jupyter Notebooks. There's another paradigm which we won't be getting into called R Markdown that is specifically designed to use Markdown in the context of R scripts. So a Jupyter Notebook um, used to be exclusively for Python and they used to be called IPython Notebooks. And if you see the a file extension for a Jupyter Notebook, it, it's still IPYNB, which stands for IPython Notebook. But it's been expanded beyond Python. Now uh, you can use Jupyter Notebooks with R, Julia, and other programming languages besides Python. When you're running a Jupyter Notebook, you're basically running it in a web browser. And that browser is connected to a server somewhere, it might be on your own computer, or it might be a remote server. And so the code is being communicated from you through the web browser, but it's actually being uh, run on a server somewhere else. It's also possible to render a Jupyter Notebook in such a way that it's viewable, but if it's not connected to a server, it's not actually runnable. And we'll see an example of this if we post code on GitHub. So let's go ahead and take a look at a Jupyter Notebook that I've made. We won't worry about the details of how it's running or how I created it because we'll talk about that later. But one of the features of a Jupyter Notebook that we can see here is that it is divided up into cells. Uh, in the Spider IDE, we saw the ability to create cells within the code, but the ability to have cells is actually built right into Jupyter Notebooks. So I, you can see here is a cell that uh, is highlighted in blue. If I click here, here's another cell, here's another cell. Here's another cell. <clears throat> and um, these cells are actually of different kinds. The first cell here, if I click on it, you can see that this drop down shows that this is a cell that's written in Markdown. And this is that markup language that I mentioned being rendered in the human readable way. If I want to see how the markup is actually done, I can double click on the cell. And I can see that it's, it's a very simple markup language. If you want a level one heading, you put one hash mark, level two heading, two hash marks. If you want to bold something, you put a star on either side of it. And when you run a cell that has markdown in it, it doesn't actually run code. It simply renders it in human readable form. And so the idea is you would write a cell basically explaining what's going on. And then that would be followed by an actual code cell. So if I click on this cell, I can see that the drop down menu says code, and I'm, I've set this up to run Python 3, so it's Python 3 code. 
So this is the same code we saw before. So if I click run, it is going to run the first part of the code. Um, instead of the output showing up in a console window, the output actually shows up directly below the cell. So we saw before that this code asks us to type in a value for Z. Um, and so that request shows up in this box right here. So I'll type in the number three and press return. Okay, it's done running that block. It didn't show me anything, but that's because I didn't ask it to show me anything. So that's the input section of the code. Here is the output section of the code. Uh, again, if I wanna look at the markdown, I can double click on it. Um, <clears throat> now here is the next code block. And so if I run this code block, it's gonna show me uh, my number for X, my number for Y, and then because the number I typed in was not five, it prints something else. Um, now, one of the things about having the code divided up into blocks is that you can run the blocks independently. You can skip blocks of code, you can go back and run them over. So for example, if I want to run the program again, I don't need to rerun this initial section. I can just run um, the section by clicking on it and clicking run. Uh, of course, since I'm not changing what the numbers are, every time I run this cell, I get the same answer. If I want to have changed the value of this, I have to go back and run this cell over again. I can make it be something else. Now, when I read, run this code cell, the environment knows that the value of Z is five. And so when I run it, it prints five instead. Um, it is possible to have more complicated markup. Of course, what would uh, a presentation be without a cat photo? Um, if you become a little more uh, experienced with writing Markdown, you this is how you make a link in Markdown. And you can also incorporate actual HTML code. So this is just simply the HTML tag for an image. And when I run this, um, the image shows up. So you can see that <clears throat> this gives you a lot of opportunities, not only to just put um, formatted text, but for example, if you want to explain uh, where you got the code from, you could put a link to that. If you want to have diagrams showing how the code works, you can also embed that in the markdown. So this is an example of a Jupyter Notebooks, a very simple Jupyter Notebook script. I mentioned that you could also look at code on GitHub. So if you take this uh, IPY um, NB file and upload it to GitHub, so here, here is an example of a GitHub site and here's a, a Jupyter Notebook file. If I click on that, GitHub is now going through that file and rendering it as a, it as a page. So if someone wants to look at my code, and see what I, the explanation that I've given for how the code works, they are able to do that without even having Jupyter Notebooks installed. However, this code is not runnable, even though it looks the same as when I was running it in the Jupyter Notebook, there isn't actually any way um, in GitHub that I am able to run the code. We will see that there are a couple platforms that do allow, to, allow us to run other people's code online, and we'll get to that later.